Violin Lessons for Beginners Cripple Creek Lesson We believe anyone can learn to play the violin or fiddle. Music is too precious and too important to limit access to it. Our mission is to bring the joy of music to as many people as possible. Regardless of location, vocation, background, culture, or ability. Includes, Suzuki Books 1, 2, 3, and 4, Beaufort, Red Desert Fiddle. Everything else discounted is marked. Ultimate Practice Guide. Listen now to my free Cripple Creek lesson. This is lesson 2A, and it will be all about the tune Cripple Creek. The origins of Cripple Creek are unknown. It's one of those folk tunes where it can't quite be traced back to one person or one place. There's speculation that it's about a town called Cripple Creek in Arkansas, or one in Kentucky, or one in Colorado, or half a dozen other locations. So it's just one of those tunes that you can't quite pin down. The earliest recorded versions um, by musicologists were from around 1917. So that's about when the tune started becoming well known and documented. Cripple Creek is means literally that it's a crippled creek. It's a crooked river, a river that meanders and curves in lots of places. Now let me just demonstrate the potential of this little fiddle tune when you utilize just a few of the skills and ideas that I'm going to give you in this unit. And that's just using about a third of the ideas that you're going to have at your disposal by the time you finish this unit. As we learned in Lesson 1A, most fiddle tunes are in the form AB, and Cripple Creek is in the form AB. Now what I want you to start noticing in fiddle tunes is that the A is going to be different in some way from the B. Either it'll be in a different register. One will be up high, one will be down low. It'll have a different texture. It'll have a drastically different rhythm or just its overall character will be a different character in a book. So just start taking note of these little changes. It's just interesting to take note of that tendency for the A to be different in some way from the B. This song is definitely a dance tune, and so it relies heavily on strong rhythmic drive, so keep that in mind while you're learning it. Also, while you're learning this tune, I want you to be on the lookout for a good opportunity to put a slide in and a grace note. Okay, I want you to have some spots picked out before we get to lesson C. All right, let's woodshed. The A part is in the form of call and response. And this call and response happens two times in the A part. So we've got a question, answer, question, answer in the A part. Let me play the question for you. That's the call or the question. Here's the response or the answer. Okay, then it does it again, exactly the same. Here's the question. And 
the answer. So it's really simple. It's a simple tune and therefore it's going to be very easy for you to add change-ups, to add ornaments, and to experiment with your bowings. Okay, let me show you that question one more time. Third finger on the E string. Nothing fancy with the bowing. Okay, let's try it one more time. Ready, go. Got it? Then the answer starts out the same way. Try that with me. Ready, go. One more time, start down bow, ready, go. Okay now, we're not done with A yet, and we're ready to start our second instance of, of the call, the question, and we're gonna have to start it on an up bow. It's a little bit weird, but it's perfectly fine. So here's your second call or question, starting up bow. And the answer. Got it? Okay, let's try them together. Call, response, call, response. Or question, answer, question, answer. Okay, from the beginning. One, two, ready, go. Now, up bow, ready, go. So that's A. So then we go back and repeat it again. So Cripple Creek is a little bit repetitive and it's just up to you to keep adding some interesting elements to it. From the beginning, this will be our repeat. One, two, ready, go. Okay, that's the A part. I forgot to mention this is in the key of A major, which has three sharps, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. It's one of the easiest keys to play on the violin. Um, so just recognize the fact that it's in A major and we will be doing an A major scale to go along with this tune. All right, you've got the A section. Let's learn the B section. Starts with a C sharp like this. Sounds like a question to me. Let's try it. One, two, ready, go. And I am putting a slur there. Try it again, ready, go. And here's the answer. Pretty simple, okay? Look at, watch it up close. It's easy, except you have to get that high three. Try just that little snippet. Up a scale, A string, one, two, ready, go. Okay, so that's, the B part is also a call and response. The musical term is call and response. I like to explain it in, by comparing it to a question and an answer, okay? Let's start the beginning of B one more time. Da, 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 dum, bum. Here we 
we go. Slower. One, two, ready, go. Okay, and the answer. Okay, so practice that high three, and then it does it again. It's just like the A section. It repeats the call and response again. So let's do the second time it happens. Ready? Go. And then we repeat the B section. Let's do the entire B section all the way through. Ready? Go. there is to this tune. The hardest thing about it is keeping track of where you are in all the repetitions. Try to get this tune up to about uh, half note equals 84 and that will sound about like this. Ready and that's a good working speed where we can start adding ornaments and fancy bowings. Okay?